rising from the um, commencement for the registration exercise. That's the voter registration exercise. Um, in a couple of moments, my cherished guest will be um, with us around the glass table where the discussion will take place. And you know, after this, we'll just look at the headlines of the various newspapers. But just before we look at the various newspapers, I know uh, most of us are eager and restless to go out there and register to vote. But just before we step out of our homes to register, let's make sure we've washed our hands with soap and the running water or applied hand, san hand sanitizers. That's the alcohol-based hand sanitizers as regularly as we can just before we step out of our homes. Do we have our face mask or nose masks on? Yes, let's remind ourselves to pick or um, keep our nose masks as we step out and put them on around your mouth or and your nose, not around your chin or your forehead. Right, and when you get to the registration center, let's do well to ensure social distancing or physical distancing. And whilst you go to the registration center, make sure you pick up your national ID card or passport, or if not any of the two, um, find two persons who have those requirements to accompany you to avoid any disappointments. Once again, good morning and welcome to the dialogue. Now let's take a look at the front and the back pages of the various newspapers as assembled in front of us this morning. As usual, the new crusading guide is our first port of call, and NDC unveils collapsible campaign team against NPP towards December polls. That's the lead headline for its front page. Also on the front page, we have Chabosum Flex uh, Flax Nanado. Flax Nanado says president is pot politically blind and deaf. John Kuma hails Akufado for introducing NEIP. Also on the, sorry, that's it for the new crusading guide. Next stop is the Chronicle newspaper. Its front page says, after all the pa pa, um, NDC admits voter turnout impressive. I like the sound of that headline. After all the pa pa, NDC admits voter turnout impressive. How pirates seized crew of Ghanaian registered fishing vessel. We also have social distancing takes back seat in registration exercise. So these, that's the chronicle for you. Next up is the Daily Statesman. Smooth start for voters' registration with few problems at some centers. Chairman Woon to make cautions against aiding foreigners to register. Mahama to scapegoat Alabi for likely 2020 defeat. And in your shot, Professor Joshua Alabi with the caption, 2020 campaign manager for NDC. The Ghanaian Times is next, and we have three judges murdered 38 years ago remembered. Voter registration takes off smoothly, but with social distancing, mask wearing concerns. President inaugurates 74.3 million water projects in central region. We'll deal with troublemakers at registration centers, Greater Accra Regional Minister. And who wins presidential, presidential pitch today? Let's go to the back page for the Ghanaian Times and whole residents count losses from heavy rainfall. And Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Canadian government launched 2.5 million Ghana City program to support women farmers. The Daily Guide is our next port of call and voters rush to register. Shameful NDC fear, fear mongering. Nigel Gazi salutes hush puppy.
over 350 million pound scam. And finally, the last newspaper to um, browse the headlines is the Daily Graphic. Enthusiasm. Many turn up to register on Thursday. Social distancing protocols breached. COVID-19 private sector fund appeals for support. And government's free water for all ends. We turn our attention to the back page for the Daily Graphic. Eurojet boss redeems pledge to Upper West Region. Ten die in another road crash in Ashanti. So these are the collection of newspapers on the glass table this morning. And um, when my guest is seated, um, we will, of course, dissect these, um, some of the issues um, coming up. But uh, if all goes well, we will have a special guest in the studio this morning, um, in a person of the Greater Accra Regional Chairperson or Chairman for the new patriotic party. Right, just before we get into matters nitty gritty, let's just update ourselves with COVID-19 figures in the country. Currently, positive cases tested so far since testing began is 17,741, with unfortunate um, 112 deaths. The good news, and thankfully, 13,268 persons have made a recovery, or yes, made a swift recovery, if I have to put it that way. So, well, as much as or as long as we uh, continue to adhere to um, the directives as stated by the President and the Ghana Health Service, of course, um, we cannot hide away or run away from um, the coronavirus, but what we can do is ensure that we stay safe and, um, you know, treat ourselves if we get infected. So 13,268 persons um, been you know, um, treated for the 19 should all go well for the country. So let's just keep reminding ourselves to Wash our hands with soap and running water as frequently as we can. Apply alcohol-based hand sanitizers. I can't, repeat, I can't stop repeating these directives as many times as I can. Let's take our face mask or nose mask anytime we are stepping out of our homes and put them on, on our nose. Uh, on our noses and uh, mouth, not on our chins or on our forehead, please. Not on our chins or forehead. And of course, when we are in public, let's ensure that we, we maintain a two meter maximum or say a minimum of a meter distance between ourselves and the next person. If all of these fails, you know what to do. Stay home, tune in to, net, to television, and enjoy all our interesting programs. Of course, today um, is the mother of all talk shows. The seat will be airing at 8 p.m. And subsequent to that, Asirat with Abu Karim will also be coming your way. Of course, we have interesting movies and other programs, such as the African Spies, which will be coming just before the midday news. And of course, the midday news will bring you highlights of ongoing uh, news activities around the country. Right. Um, the general overseer for the International Charismatic Church, uh, Bishop Opong Edu Jemfis, uh, will be bringing you this and every Sunday between the hours of 8, sorry, 9 and 10 a.m., um, an hour of service and worship of praise and, uh, and our service of praise and worship on our platform, Net2 Television, this and every Sunday. Make sure you join um, them. If you cannot um, uh, watch them on your TV, make sure you join the feed via social media handles at Net2 TV GH on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we'll be giving you updates on Facebook and YouTube as well right this show is still streaming live on our youtube and facebook platforms like i said earlier at net 2 television where you can send your thoughts and commentary to the um, show 
um, where we will read them out when we find the time. Don't forget, Franco Trading has introduced its latest its its latest branded Franco television sets onto the Ghanaian market. What kind of sizes do you want for your homes and living rooms or bedrooms? Is it a 36 inch? Is it a 40 inch or 43 or 55 inch television sets? Just walk to the Franco Trading showrooms and then pick and identify any television choice or any television Franco TV um, television choice um, that you want. It's not just Franco branded TVs available. They also have in stock um, the latest mobile phones and its accessories at their showroom. So to contact them, uh, you can head online. That's the www.francotrading.com or www.francophones.com. Alternatively, the phone number to reach them remains 0302 Two two five six five one. Franco Trading still phone Papa Fier, and you're reminded that the living room um, restaurant is now open to the general public. Of course, during the lockdown or the partial lockdown, it restricted its operations, but now um, its operations are full blown and open to the public. So you can walk in there or drive there and choose a delectably, a delectable traditionally cooked cuisine. Could be bangkung okro, rice balls, and granite soup. Any any kind of dish that you um, desire for. Just head to um, the living rooms. But you are reminded that they are enforcing the anti-COVID-19 protocol measures. So you are reminded: no masks, no entry. Repeat: no masks no entry. So just before you head to the living room restaurant in East Legon, make sure you have your nose masks with you or you will be denied entry. Right. Back into the studio as we await the arrival of our guests. Let's activate the phone lines now and um, from wherever you are located, tell us your impressions about the commencement of the registration exercise currently ongoing, being conducted by the Electoral Commission. Where do you live? How is the process, um, you know, unfolding and transpiring within your community? Has it been smooth and um, sailing so far? Or has there been some, you know, obstacles and um, roughnecks along, along the way? 0240-550-899 is the number to call. Um, so if you have any commentary or opinion or, you know, you've, your observations within your locality, please, please, we are asking for you to share them with us. Do I have my first caller on the line this morning? Hello? Hello, good, mo good morning. Good morning, let me take that. Ah, you may draw my way when you hear me. I'm not going to be a person. 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 I'm not going to be a person.
Central. That was a, a regular caller sharing his thoughts on the ongoing registration process. Um, for him, he's noticed or observed a smooth sailing operation so far since yesterday. And um, he's urging um, all Ghanaians to uh, reach out to the registration centers. But he had one um, word of um, advice from his observations. It seems like everyone is trooping to um, particular registration centers, in, actually for those who do not reside around that particular uh, polling center. Um, the caller was saying, don't worry, it's been done on zonal basis. So later on, um, the team will move to um, your locality to commence the registration exercise. Yes, let's take about two more calls and then we bring the phone phone interactive session to uh, a wrap. So 0240-550-899. Let's hear your observations from the ongoing registration exercise currently ongoing within your area. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, my brother. Ah, very good morning, my friend. Can we have your name and where you are calling from? It's your brother, your everything, Mohammed from Abu Sukai. Oh, Mohammed. Yay. <laughs> 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 Thank God we are alive. That's right. Everything that's right. is okay. That's right. Uh, my brother, Tell me. I'm having a little problem what I saw yesterday at uh, Odudu Dio Dio. Okay. The people have started again. Which people? Our NDP brothers who don't want Ghana to move on, who don't want Ghana to go forward, mm. have started again. Okay. Here I'm calling. I'm not calling for violence. I'm calling for peace. Yeah. My brother to do, 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 do who are MPP members should wake up. My brother, they should wake up. Because you can't deny a Ghanaian not to register in a certain area. Why should you be so? Mm. Are we not all Ghanaians? Is Ghana a Ghanaian? Is it not a Ghana a Ghanaian? Is it not a Ghana a Ghanaian? Is it not an Ewe a Ghanaian? My brother, here is where I'm crying. Mm. My brothers or my sisters, our leaders and MPP, what are they doing? Yesterday we are not in government, mm. but today we are in government. Mm. Which shows you will sit down and look at some people to deny some people not to register. Because this one is on my heart. You know what happened, my brother. Mm -hmm. You are the one who interviewed me at the end of the day, even you are being in trouble with that uh, interview that you did on me. Right. So here I'm calling. Me can you make a me? Me can you see? 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 Okay. All right. Thank you very, very much, my prodigal brother, Mohammed from Abosokan. He has a do 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 um, as his soft spot, and he's not happy with events currently pertaining there. So this is where we wrap up the interactive conversation for the morning. But this is not all. You can still send your observations to our um, social media handles, definitely we will um, share them with our audience as well. You can put them on our WhatsApp line, which is um, the same as the studio line, 0240-550-899. Seated uh, ar ar around the glass table already is the Great Accra Chairman for the new Patriotic Party, Mr. Divine Utu Agoham. Right, we've been waiting for him. He's finally here. Um, Honorable, uh, good morning and welcome to the show. 
Good morning, mm -hmm. and thank you for having me. Thank you very, very much. Ideally, we would have loved to speak to you with the um, Honorable Chairman, but, well, I am a guy, hundred percent guy, and he is also hundred percent guy, Dangbe. So we'll make do, just excuse us today, we'll make do with the English, but where need be, we'll enter the tree or that can rail. Good morning once again, yeah. and it's good to have you. My pleasure. Yes. Um, right. A few days ago, of course, um, the Elephant Party wrapped up its, um, uh, let's say, preparatory stages towards the campaign at the Lisa Hotel with acclamation um, ceremony and other issues. Would you just give us your impression of that particular ceremony and then the way forward ahead of um, the general elections are coming? Thank you, my brother. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. My greetings to your cherished audience. Right. Um, yes, so on Saturday um, at Aliza Hotel, uh, we brought to uh, an end the process of selecting our candidates for elections 2020. Um, the last of which was, of course, the acclamation of His Excellency Nana Rodanko Akufuado as the candidate or the flag bearer of the of the of the new patriotic party and uh, immediately thereafter uh, he also nominated uh, his excellency dr uh, mahmoud baumia uh, as his running mate and that is the practice so in consultation with the national council um, they were both acclaimed as the flag bearer and then the running mate of the party for this year's election. It was um, a great occasion for us because uh, ordinarily we would have, you know, converged as uh, a party at a congress where there would have been representation from all the uh, constituencies across the length and breadth of the country. We have 275 mm -hmm. constituencies. Um, all of them would have converged at a place that's been the practice. And then uh, we'll go through the process of uh, Congress and then uh, at the end uh, vote to select uh, or elect our leader. Uh, but uh, when we open nomination and then uh, all through to the closing of nomination, we had only one candidate filing uh, in the person of His Excellency Nanadu Dankwa And so we had a sole candidate. Right. And the constitution demands that we go and acclaim him. Again, we couldn't do the acclamation at a public convergence as we would have done because of COVID-19. Right. So NEC took decision that we would have to allow national council to acclaim the candidate for and on behalf of you know party mm. the whole party yeah so that event took place on saturday and uh, it was a very beautiful sight to behold right um the way he accepted you know the confidence the party reposed in him uh, the way he went ahead decisively to immediately nominate and have his running mate, uh, you know, also acclaimed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was really a huge success for, for the party. And so I want to use this opportunity to uh, congr congratulate him and then also the running mate, in this case, uh, Dr. Baumia. Uh, right. We wish them well. Uh, right. Also to say a big echo to the National Party that put together that beautiful program that we all witnessed. Yeah, so you, are part of, you are part of the executive, so yes, that Yuko comes back. So to I'm you. one of them, so yes. I say I go also to myself. To yourself, yes. Makai, Makai and all in. <laughs> Right, but um, during the event, during the president's speech, when he was talking, he made mention that the NPP administration has a good story to tell. So he implored you and the executives from national, regional, constituency level, even to polling station level, to go out there and propagate um, the message. What is the good news the president was talking about at the recent Congress, if we have to take our mind? All right, What's thank you. Yeah. Um, let me take your audience and all of us back a little. Right. In 2016, when the president was campaigning, mm. uh, the NDC made mockery of 
you know, his campaign. And at a point in time, uh, teased that he was going around and uh, begging for, for votes, begging the delegates, uh, begging the electorate to vote for him. Uh, he accepted it and then said that, yes, he will go around and beg because the power belongs to the people. And so if he wants it, he'll go ahead and beg for it. He went ahead and did that. And then Ghanaians voted massively for him. We all know this. Now, he made promises of what he was coming to do. And by the grace of God, you will bear witness, I'll bear witness, that uh, we can see for ourselves uh, the promises that he made. Um, he said he was coming to do uh, free SHS. Mm. Our opponents on the other side said it was not possible. Right. And, and I think I, I understand them. Because looking at the way they ran the economy down, looking at the way they were bereft of ideas as to how to turn things around and get the economy going, say that they had to resort to IMF and uh, therefore put a freeze on public employment and all that, and the people of Ghana were suffering. There was no way, in their view, uh, as to how we can, you know, bring about free education. Because to them, we can't finance it. Now we are here, Ghanaians responding to him, going around and begging and making promises, voted for him. He's the president of the land now. And to the surprise of everybody, even including myself, mm -hmm. maybe you two, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. within a space of three and a half years, mm -hmm. considering what he's been able to do within this short period, he is saying that the story is there. We would have to go and tell this the story. Former President Kufo also acknowledged that he thought there were too many promises. Exactly. From exactly. 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 He said that ground, on Saturday. Yeah. You are right. That what is actually on the ground. He, it's it it's surprising like. everybody, even including His Excellency, mm. the former president. So president as you can Kufo. see on the screens now, these are excerpts of um, some of the um, achievements of the president. This is um, except from the three-day tour of the Greater Accra region by um, the president, His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Kufuado. Right. So now Good. There we go. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. So these stories are there, and I'm happy you are showing this. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. These stories are there, and it is our responsibility to go and you know uh, bring the attention of Ghanaians to this. I'm saying bring the attention of Ghanaians to this because the former president, John Mahama, right. described Ghanaians as having short memory. Mm. So if we don't go and tell the story, you, chances are that we will leave a vacuum, we will leave a lacuna that will, you know, kind of engender propaganda and falsehood from the NDC right. because that is their character. Mm. So. The president only said that we should go mm. and do what is rightfully our duty, okay, right. as mm. party leaders to tell the story as it is. But then there's one critical point that I would want to make, and that point is that the president is not counting on our storytelling to win the elections. Explain, please. Good. Mm. I will explain. Thank you. Now, what he is saying is that just as he went 2016, and beg the good people of Ghana right. to give him their mandate, mm. that they listened to him, they gave him their mandate, and by the special grace of God, he has performed so sternly that everybody is clapping for, 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 for what he has been able to achieve within this short time. He will go again okay. and beg Ghanaians to still give him their mandate. Right. So it's about we going to beg Ghanaians to give ask four more years for him to do, to continue what he is doing. Right. He said, even as we go to ask for Ghanaians to give us uh, another mandate, even as we go to tell the story as it is, mm -hmm. we should bear in mind that the battle is still the Lord. This is so much of interest to somebody like me mm -hmm. because from where I sit and from where I'm coming from my upbringing, right. I know that if the, the leader is relying on God, 
there is no way he will fail. He had been in the saddle for three terms. He went 2008, mm -hmm. 2012, right. and 2016, mm. when God felt he has prepared him enough. He gave him the opportunity to lead the country. And we are all seeing the results. And so therefore, yes, we will go. We will tell the story. But we also know clearly that victory will come from Jehovah God. Right. Because the Bible says what? Horses and chariots are made ready for war. Mm -hmm. But victory comes from Jehovah. And that is the character of the leader that we have now. I am personally so, 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 so proud of such a person who will not tell Ghanaian that he is a dead goat. He will not respond to their needs and their complaints. When Ghanaians were suffering and they were complaining, His Excellency John Mahama responded by saying that he is a dead goat. As if to say, somebody sang a song and say, who can no cry, I'm here no more. Right. Now you told us that you are a dead goat, mm. meaning that whatever is of concern to us, you care less. And so now you are telling us we should give you another mandate. Mm. Another mandate to do what? You are thinking that Ghanaians, we have short memory to the extent that the doomsday situation you plant the country into, we have forgotten, we've lost memory of it. The fact that you run down the national health insurance and the, 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 the health center was virtually returning, returning to cash and carry. You think we've forgotten this so soon? We, we, we a whole president. BBC interviewed you and asked you a simple question. Mr. President, have you ever taken bribe? And you asked the... the, human being the, or the as a president. As, uh, whether as a president or as a person. I mean, I was so, so, so embarrassed. And you told us also in your own book that you are a person who suffers from indecision. Right. And I'm not surprised at all. Mm. Because what you said is a clear... A, 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 a demonstration of what character you are. Mm. Because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the person has already given us his own characteristics already. Right. He cannot tell whether he took bribe mm -hmm. as a president or as a person or as what. That as the rest is for us to, to judge. Right. Again, he has already told us that he is a dead good. So Whatever he is doing, if it's having an effect on you that you are not happy with, don't waste your time telling him because he will not respond. What he feel like doing, he would, and truly, when he cancelled the, uh, how do you call that one? The, uh, yeah. okay, um, right. The um, Greater Accra Regional Chairperson of the NPP is still our guest this morning, but just let me just read one message um that has come in so far i have learned a lot from my father and so i am his honesty and loyalty is much more than a spirit to me the can do spirit of my father has moved me this far i love you so much daddy divine um, this is from collins edu i don't know whether you know a certain collins edu who has um, sent some messages um, to the show already. If Wasantua says, my grandma lives in Dapo, he can't, he doesn't understand English. Or oh. if Wasantua today make do with us as we go into the English language, we've got very important things to say, like the regional, regional chairman is saying. So, honorable, sorry yeah. about that. You so, what I'm saying is that, you see, um, I don't know, um, I, 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 I am not you know, saying this with an intent to run the personality of His Excellency, your mama, down. Right. But I'm telling Ghanaians mm -hmm. that here is a gentleman mm -hmm. who's told us already, he himself told us, that he's a dead good. Uh, 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 whatever there is that we were suffering at the time and were complaining, expecting him to amend his ways so that at least he will, the, the, the pains will, you know, come down a little. And he, his response was loud and clear. Mm. And I'm saying that the Bible has already made it clear to us right. that out of the abundance of the heart, mm -hmm. the mouth speaks. Right. So if I'm saying something, then to a large extent, I am portraying to you my character or my personality, who I am. All right. Mm -hmm. And if the person has already told us that he he, he doesn't care, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't care, mm -hmm. and uh, we went through all that, Ghanaians cried unto Jehovah God. God came to our rescue and gave us 
a leader that is sensitive to the plight of the ordinary Ghanaian, yeah. to the extent that he is on a mission to ensure that the advantages that some who are in the elite class are having should be made available and accessible to those who are below, you know, the the the, the, mm. the ladder, so that we will all have the basic uh, 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 foundation that is necessary to ensure that we have a, a good future. That's, that's a good point, which will dovetail us into my next inquisition, which I wanted to find out. I mean, like you're saying, if the president wants all of us to have the opportunities um, that's available to the elite, let's now narrow it down to the greater Accra region. What are some of the policies and programs which have been beneficial to the greater Accra region, the people of the greater Accra region? Oh, thank you. I, I think that uh, Greater Accra Region, uh, we all know, is the capital city of the nation. Uh, we don't have too much uh, land space for farming and other activities as it is in you know, the other areas. Otherwise, one of the key policies of this government that I personally think every Ghanaian must hold in high esteem mm. is the uh a greek ministry's uh, intervention planting for food and jobs. planting for planting food for rural export export and planting for food and job now rearing for food we are exporting these uh, targets to eliminate our dependence on you know uh, importation of foreign rice and and all this okay i think that is one solid uh, uh, policy that naturally considering where we are if we are able to as it were, take advantage of this policy, mm. okay? Surely, uh, our food importation alone will cut. In Greater Accra, yes, uh, to the eastern side of the region, that's the Dangwe areas, you know, the rural Ga areas, we, we do farming, but not as much as is done in other, other regions. Mm. Again, um, we can also look at uh, the, so for that matter, the one district, one factory, okay? Mm. Uh, where we are, mm. because... Hold on, let's just, let's still stay on the agri sector. Mm. Um, how about the fisheries, the, the seasonal ban? Is it like the, the season ban, the, uh, which was instituted where um, fisher, fisher folk would have to wait for about a month or two um, ha, did it benefit the fisher folk in the region as well? Thank you so much. Um, that policy, unfortunately, did not sit too well with right. the fishermen. Okay. Um, because, as you all know, uh, fisher folks are uh, peasant, you know, uh, fishes, if yeah. I should put it that way. Uh, what they go for is what they, they feed on. So they if for any survival. reason, very good. If for any reason they are unable to go in a particular day, what that means is that the next day there will be a problem. Right. So the uh, situation should have been said that there is an alternative, you know, source of livelihood before, you know, uh, implementing that. But the few that we, the, the little that we were able to do, they, they, they complied because the Honorable Minister for Fisheries, right. uh, Honorable Afule, Afule Kwe, did a lot of public sensitization, engaging the people. In fact, she ever invited me to sit in it when she was doing the Greater Accra one. And I think that that got the fishermen at least to buy into the idea Mm. And so the, 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 when it was introduced, they themselves, from where I come from, I come from the Dangwe areas, right. okay? The response we got was that they themselves were telling me, oh, Ghana Lupi, but show me, you know? Mm. And, and that was the, the projection that if we allow the fishes to, how do you call it? Is it to hatch or what? Yeah. Mm. You know, so that they will breed and, and, and reproduce. Right. If we will allow that time, I believe that it will, it will give the fishermen themselves, you know, a, a, a bumper harvest and then that would bring money into their, okay. their so pocket. Would that, would so would I believe that. Change this time around, yes, sadly, that's where I'm going to. Okay. I believe that an arrangement to take care of their, you know, uh, livelihood, okay, alternatively within that period would get all of them to, have to, to, to comply because they already think it's a good thing. 
Right. I, I, I am a fisherman myself, you right. know, have canoes at the, at the coast. So I, I, I know the situation they, they find themselves in. But more so, what is not uh, too okay for, uh, for us now is what we are still finding difficult to, to stop. Mm. Um, as in the illegal means of you know, fishing, fishing which uh, yeah. we, we think that is rather depleting uh, fish stock. Okay. You know. So let's put the fisheries aside right. and continue with the aggressive I now. think okay. that um, in Greater Accra here, because we have, uh, how do you call it, we are close to the the port both the seaport and then the the airport, the airport. um the 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 benefit we are having in all these policies okay is more of the factories right okay uh -huh. in 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 ghana now we are producing tiles okay here that too we were importing tiles from china from spain from italy and all now we're producing tiles here uh, sometimes uh, a visit to the factory, a central factory, which is one of them, another factory in the western region and all. Uh, their complaint is that at a point in time, they even produce so much that the Ghanaian market is unable to contain it. And now they are aggressively looking for market within the Africa West African sub-region. So yes, uh, it is already benefiting us in that, in that sense. Right. Uh, also, we are producing, I know, uh, diapers that we were importing. There's a factory around the uh, English and Mafrom area mm -hmm. where we are producing diapers and many, many more. Right. Yesterday, somebody came to me and then brought me uh, canned tuna. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. A new factory, Atema. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. I've even taken a decision that I'll go you know, through the region and mm -hmm. then put on record all these factories and all these projects that are coming from and the recently, policies that... Recently, we heard the VW um, assembly plant in Ghana has started... Yes, for some Toyota, pro production. Uh, yes. Toyota, Sino uh, Truck. Sino Truck is here. I mean, we have a lot of them. Mm. Uh, I'm sure the next time I have an opportunity to sit before you, I should okay. be able to mention them one by one. Because right. I'm saying that we are not going to publish any green book. No. Okay. We will be doing evidence-based campaign. Right. And so when we mention that this one is here, we would uh, expect that somebody from there should be able to call in to either confirm or deny. Yesterday I was at another station where I said that the Green Book that the NDC uh, published in 2016 election, mm -hmm. my area, Sige, mm -hmm. they have it in it that they have uh, put up uh, the secondary school over there. Right. But there is nothing like that. Oh, yes. Honorable. Uh, fortunately for me, the whole NDC says it's put up a school in Sege. Fortunately for it's not there. Yes. Fortunately for me, mm. my colleague, uh, Adekoka, mm -hmm. my colleague on the other side, right. okay, he's a senior brother anyway. Mm -hmm. Respect to him. Yes. He called into the program mm -hmm. and said that. And so I, I said, we are now doing it. And he said, all that we've been able to do is a foundation. I said, thank God. At least we've done the foundation, OK? So when we get to where we will be telling the story, mm -hmm. I would want it to be evidence-based. In fact, I will lead that one myself, mm -hmm. because I'm the head of the region. Right. So I should be able to say that we've done this one here. It mm -hmm. is there. So you can there's go and there's find There's fertilizer here. There's this there. There's branching. We should be able yes. to tell our story and point figures to what we have done. Right. But you see, I would want to use this opportunity also to speak to the MPP fraternity. Now, mm. let's not be deceived that this development and all these achievements is enough to catapult us into okay. power again. Okay. We should go by what the president is saying. Even if the president himself is saying this, mm. Then clearly he's giving us a direction, and it has happened before. Yamina, who are they? what does it? How do we translate it here? Translate it into into like tree. What the, no, into like in oh yes, yes, yes. What the yes, president Very is good. It simply means that mm. that's why I told you earlier mm. Mm, that Bible says horses and chariots are made ready for battle. Right. Meaning that you will have to go and do your part. God will not come and do and make the horse ready for you, make the chariot ready for you. That is the part that you must do. Mm. But you must acknowledge that victory comes from God. Right. 
That's that's the president's position, mm -hmm. and it 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 makes me so 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 happy mm -hmm. because I believe hundred percent that that is what gave us victory in 2016. Mm -hmm. And if Sa Nyamidana Nyamidana, if we are still relying on him. Oh, then I can sit here and be double sure that we are going into another massive victory once again. Yes, has the, has so the free, has the free SHS uh, as a policy also been beneficial to the people of the Greater Accra region? Let Simply me give you. Let me a answer. A lot of schools are were already in the Greater Accra region already. So yes. how how does it translate? The free to SHS benefit? did not introduce necessarily new schools. Right. It's a policy to take. Or to absorb the 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 cost mm. that otherwise would have been on the parents, most of whom struggle to uh, uh, put you know ends uh, together. Right. Okay, so it is to uh, it is to kind of take that load off them, so that they will be able to put the the money that they would have been investing into their children's education. Mm -hmm. They can now reinvest it into their business and also indirectly, mm -hmm. whilst the child is being taken care of. Okay, the the government as it is 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 also putting money into your pocket because the money that you would have spent on your children right. that is those who think they have some parents were not even having at all mm -hmm. so their children would have been you know uh, drop out of schools okay but as it is they now have to take advantage of what the government is doing so that the children will go to school and then those who have that would have you know paid for their children they can now you know divert and put that investment into their their businesses so yes uh, great Accra, a typical example that i want to uh, cite here is that friday mm -hmm. we had neck NEC is National Executive, you know, Committee, okay? Uh, the national officers, some selected MPs, and then all the regional chairmen, right. okay? Good. When I was going for the meeting, one of my MCs, Solomon Apia of Bunkatamansu, mm -hmm. called me mm -hmm. and was virtually sounding a note of caution to me that when I go to the meeting, I should address this issue. And his issue is that some parents voluntarily marched to his office and said, ah, what is it that you poor have done? Uh, you have been able to, you know, save us from money that we would have spent on our children, and so therefore we owe you some appreciation. Right. The only way we could appreciate you is to get our children who have now turned 18 and above and they are voting age to go and vote for His Excellency the President to show appreciation. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, school has reopened at this time that the children will have to go to school. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we may lose that opportunity. And myself, come to think of it, you know, that tells how selfless a president we have. Because, for example, reference the COVID-19 uh, shutdown and all these, you know, restrictions that we have. If I were to be the president, maybe I would have kept the children at home mm. because I know registration was just in the corner so that they will register before going to school because by the time we'll be having elections, those children will still be in school, uh, will be in the house, okay? So if they had by then registered uh, in school and will be voting in the house, then we are going to lose their, their vote. Yet the president did not look at this. Mm. No wonder he is saying that the victory for the 2020 will still come from God who gave him victory in 2016. Right. Because otherwise, if mm. I were to be the president, I would have kept the children at home okay, and I get them to register before they go to school so that okay. December, when they are at home, mm. then they will vote for me. Fantastic. But the man is not looking at that. Right. He's the kind of president that God has blessed this nation with. And mm. I think that we should be proud and thankful to God that we have such a leader who is so selfless and only thinks of the interests of the nation and not himself. Fantastic, right. That's definitely the chairperson of the Great Accra and PP. You see how he has all the policies and uh, programs at the tip of his uh, fingers? Well, the discussion continues right here on the dialogue. My next um, maybe area to look at is now the operational politics, where I'll say, well, I'll call it operational politics, uh, in the sense that the New Patriotic Party has never won the um, seat in Nada, Pram Pram, or Pong Kataman. So um, this time it looks like um, the party seems uh, aggressive in its approach to take those seats. Is that going to be possible? Um, all things 
are possible to him that believes. Right. Good. Uh, and I also know that uh, in God's own time, Bible says he makes all things beautiful. Mm. Uh, if it is in the will of God, I am sure the seeds that you are mentioning, even if we cannot win all, we should be able to win some. Now you are talking about Ada, mm -hmm. you are talking about Sege, yeah. uh, Bunkata Manso, yeah. uh, then you come to Ningo Pram Pram. Right. Which other one do you have? Odododio uh, you, I'm sure. Yeah, Odododio uh, I think um, at least the elephant has triumphed there at least once. once. Yes. But since then, it's gone back to the books of the NBC. So yes, these are within your domain. Yeah, so you are talking about some six or seven consensus here. Right. I'm sure if at the end of the elections, I have the opportunity to come and sit here again, um, I should be able to account for a minimum of three right. out of this. Right. So step by step, mm. we'll get there. What has caused the inability of the NPP to maybe win those seats? Uh, thank you. Mm. If you look at the Volta region, uh, Volta region shares boundary with the eastern part of Greater Accra, the right. Dangbe areas, right. all right? Mm. And uh, you know, geographically, um, where you are located, whatever happens there has an impact on you, right. naturally. Mm -hmm. Now, our people have been made to believe that the NDC is an extension of their tribe, more or less. Okay. And so therefore, it is seen as a crime to belong to some other uh, political parties other than the NDC. For example, in my area, my own family, I will say it is now that a lot has changed. Otherwise, about 90% of you know, the family members were all NDC, okay? But I know and I believe strongly because I've been able to do it and I believe it can be done. Uh, with time, uh, carefully educating and bringing their minds to the, the, the realities. Because um, if you go to our areas, all the major developments that we can point to a constituency like Sege that I contested for, if you can, you can, you can ask anybody. Mm. All the major development that we have, schools, toilet facilities, electricity, water, all the major social interventions, all the development that we can point to was done by the new patriotic party. Right. Sadly, they would see all this and they will still think that, yes, uh, but we will still belong to where we are. You need to have time for them. You need to engage them. You need to get them to believe that they are better off with this party than that party. Again, traditionally, um, you know, the new patriotic party is seen as an Akan party. Right. And where we are, the, those of us along the coast, mm. okay? Those days when, you know, we were all fighting for space, these days we don't fight with our hands, don't fight with, we fight with the brain and, and all that. Yeah. I mean, human as we are, we are all struggling for space, okay? So we've gone through the era where, you know, our ancestors were fighting and all, I'm living yeah. here, you are coming, I said, no, don't come and all that. Yeah. One. We've yeah. gone through that. So this has left a footprint of, you know, some hatred for some tribes. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. That kind of, so we don't want to uh, have anything to do with these people that historically had this problem with our ancestors. Right. So that has also been part of the problem. But we've moved on as a right. country. Mm. We've moved on as a country. And we need to um, uh, invest some quality time into educating the people and getting them to appreciate the fact that Ghana is one country, okay? Mm -hmm. There's nothing like, I'm a, a Dangbe, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. But here I am as a regional chairman, not of any other region than the capital region of the country. Right. And so if I can do it, any other person can also do it. Okay. We just need to educate our people. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that it will take some time, but gradually we'll get there. You'll get there, right. So yesterday, the big day arrived, and of course, everyone was waiting for the commencement for the voter registration exercise. A few days to that, the nation was on the tenterhooks. Uh, would we go ahead? Would 
would we not? Would we go ahead? And the Supreme Court came out and says, well, let the EC do their constitutional, I mean, go on with their constitutional mandate. So here we are. The commencement for the voters registration exercise has started. Um, what has been your observation so far as the chairperson for the Greater Accra region? Thank you so much. Um, yesterday was one of my uh, happiest in our days. Why? We all know, and I like the way you put it, that's why I wrote it down, <laughs> that nearly everybody was sitting on tentacles. Right. We we're not too sure what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, except that the NDC did one thing right, which I'll give them credit for, 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 for that. Mm. Uh, you see, uh, they for once, you know, accepted the fact that the country is now operating under the rule of law. And so therefore, you don't go about shouting and inciting people to cause trouble, to foment chaos and all that one. But if you are not happy with something, mm -hmm. the channel of seeking redress mm -hmm. is already established by law. Right. So they went to court mm -hmm. and the court ruled on their case. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is that mm -hmm. as characteristic of the NDC, when they came out, right at the entrance of the, of the court premises, mm. what the court said, they told us the reverse. Okay, just, just hold on that thought again. We'll come back to continue that particular point. But we'll have to take a break where we'll have to make some money for ourselves. So, viewers, we are taking a quick short break. When we come back, the Greater Accra Regional Chairperson for the New Patriotic Party is here and we'll continue with the conversation. Please stay. Right, welcome back into the studio. The show remains the dialogue with me, Isaac Clotet. This morning, my guest is the Greater Accra Regional Chairman for the New Patriotic Party, Divine Otu Agoham. We've been touching on uh, quite a number of issues um, in the past 40 or so minutes. We've talked about the MPP uh, acclamation event. We've also discussed some programs and policies affecting um, residents within the greater Accra region. We've also touched on why some constituencies seem to be problematic for the NPP to, um, you know, um, take ownership in parliament. But the conversation still continues um, with the chairperson. Like we're saying, we're talking about the voter registration exercise currently, and you were telling us your observations so far. Yeah, so I was saying that, uh, as we all know of the NDC, mm. um, NDC has what it takes to tell you you are a woman, <laughs> and uh, you you they, they 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 will say it and you know consistently drum it to the stand that you begin to doubt whether <laughs> you are seeing yourself well or not. That is NDC. Yes, I, and I'm not joking. Mm. Because you see, before this exercise, the impression NDC created in our mind is that they were not for it. Right. Since 2012, mm -hmm. hmm, 2012, we have been crying that we think the, how do you call it, the register is bloated. And so therefore we we're calling for, you know, a new register. At that time, it was NDC that was in government, all right? So it is in the case that we are in government and we are pushing the Electoral Commission to do what we want. No, mm -hmm. we have been calling for this since, at the time that the NDC was in government. Right. So it's not a new thing. Mm. Now we are lucky to have the Electoral Commission coming out with cogent reasons why they think that there must be a new voters register. Mm. And so for us, we want the new register. And so if we are getting the opportunity to have a new register, hooray, we are okay with it. Mm. The NDC created the impression that they don't want it and they think we should go with the old register. I have all along been warning my party that let's be careful. I know these NDC guys. Mm. What I think we should do is that whilst they were, you know, uh, making noise, they don't want it, they don't want it, I was very, very sure that they might be preparing even more than us, the MPP. Mm -hmm. And truly, yesterday, we saw it. Yesterday, I was at a program somewhere and uh, uh, their national organizer called in to say that the massive response, okay, the way people were rushing for the register yesterday, the people who were uh, rushing to get the voter 
card okay. were all NDC people who were rushing to have their card so as to vote out the MPP. Wow. And I said, oh, really? Mm -hmm. You see, they said earlier they don't want it. Mm -hmm. Now they are telling us that they are more interested in getting it than even the MPP. Right. That is NDC for you. Mm -hmm. And true to their character, that's why I was making reference to the court ruling, which I said they've done well that they went to court to seek redress. Mm -hmm. And after the court ruled, right at the gate of the court, with all the lawyers, the legal brain of NDC, standing behind their chief scribe, I said, look, Kitia, mm. what the court ruled on. They came out eh, and turned the court ruling, okay, right in the presence of everybody, right. when cameras were on them, mm -hmm. okay? Now they are going about saying that we are having the registration and we are not respecting the uh, WHO distance. protocol, the social distances and all. Let's have a picture of Asedu Nkitia addressing the press after the court ruling and see the distance between him and the, and the lawyers and all who were around him. That is NDC for you. So for them, they will tell you they are going right. Better go looking for them on the left. That is the character of NDC. So for me yesterday, I was so, so, so happy that the turnout was so massive. Mm -hmm. Almost every uh, uh, registration center that you go, the numbers are so, so overwhelming. People are rather complaining that the process is slow and all that one. I want to uh, assure the public that what we saw yesterday, right. uh, the projection of the electoral commission, mm -hmm. things were rightly in place. And I, we just need to have patient and allow the process to go on. At the end of the day, we should be able to, uh, you know, have the, uh, how do you call it, the qualified Ghanaian, mm. you know, registering. Do you so think the education process and the clamor for uh, potential registrants, registrants to go and exercise their franchise, do you think it's okay? Do you think it's high enough for people to, you know, um, embrace the registration process as we have it now or you need we need to up the ante we need to you know make some more noise for people to exercise their franchise i I, I will answer this by saying that the results of yesterday's exercise clearly uh, tells you know the story as to whether the publicity has been you know uh, good enough or uh, or otherwise the response we saw yesterday was quite massive and that should you know answer the question as to uh, how Ghanaians are responding to it i think mm -hmm. it's okay um, we should rather be grateful to the media most of you who might have done this thing you know free of charge mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we are still counting that we should be able to continue this time what we should be doing is to be educating them on the do's and then the don'ts, so that you know we don't leave space for NDC to come and inject, you know, their uh, vile propaganda into the minds of mm. of the people to create confusion. Are you are you are you wary of um, apathy during this registration and the subsequent voters uh, voting come election day? Ordinarily, uh, one would have feared apathy for reason of the COVID-19 that we have now. But I think the situation, as we are seeing, um, is telling us a different story. The response is very, very massive. Yesterday, one of the police uh, registration centers that I went to, mm -hmm. um, those who were sitting in a corner somewhere and they were, in a way, chastising the electoral commission, they, well, because I was speaking three, they mm -hmm. didn't know I understand a way. Mm -hmm. uh, they were all voterians and they had issues with the process. Right. And to me, that's good news. Okay. Because they want to register, and these are elderly people. And they, they, they woke up early in the morning, and they were there seeking to register. It tells you that uh, the patronage is quite OK. Mm -hmm. um, if the NDC is saying that their people were you know, in the queue to register, well, I saw some. Um, normally, you will say that when you see uh, 10 hours, mm -hmm. chances are that some six of them would go for uh, NDC. I hope with time that one will change, but for now that's how it is. So uh, I, I think the, 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 the patronage is quite encouraging, and if we should see the same thing today, 
I can be 100% sure that this exercise will end up successfully. Right. We will, in a moment, be activating the birthday window and see who um, are celebrating their um, excited days today. But just before that, I want to touch on one thing the president said um, just not too long after he had taking office. The president pledged to make Accra, of course, the capital city, the cleanest city in Africa. Of course, make it, make it um, the cleanest city in Africa. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, how is that, um, say, objective coming on? Are we on course to be the cleanest city? When well, you drive in town, when we you look around you. We are, we are so, so, so much on course. Right. Let me tell you what this simply means. You mm. see, policy is kind of giving a direction what must be done. All right? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, when God said he was going to make uh, Abraham mm -hmm. the father of many nations. Right. You see how Abraham struggled to, to have children. All right? Uh, then... They had to use the back door to go and uh, uh, have a Ishmael, one, Ishmael, all right? Before later, Isaac came. I came in the picture. You, you understand? Yeah. So the present vision is that greater Accra and Accra for that matter must be, the, that's what he wants to see, all right? So it behoves on you and I, those of us who are here, to buy into that vision and start working towards it. Mm. The mayor of the city, mm. uh, Honorable Mohamed Ajay Soa, right. is having sleepless nights trying to kind of effectuate the vision of the of the president. Mm. Every now and then, mm. you see him on the street, you know, meeting people, trying to engage them. First of all, you see, it's an attitude. Right. So we must buy into the attitude that we want Accra to be the who. Who should be cleaning it? It cannot be government. Mm. We should find a way of ensuring that we, we, we manage our waste in a way that it doesn't create problem for, for it doesn't create too much problem for the administration to manage. Okay. Then the administration's response, okay, will be commensurate to the waste that is generated. Otherwise, if we think that we can just do it anyhow, and their duty is to come every now and then and be cleaning, then we have problems. So I think that so far, uh, it's gone deep into our, that's why you can make reference to it this morning. It means at least it's in your head, right. all right? Uh -huh. So step by step, mm. The waste management will start from our domestic setting. Mm -hmm. Then the municipal authorities respond, mm -hmm. will measure up to how we are able to generate them. Otherwise, if we generate 10 mm -hmm. and their response is 4, mm -hmm. then there will be, you know, an excess of sex. Right. Uh -huh. right. That's what I'm trying to, to okay. say. All right. Fantastic. So now, there's a time for us to open um, our window of birthday celebrations to see who the um, celebrants for today are the first day of july it's midweek of course it's the mid year two it's mid year two as we um, celebrate the midweek for the week it is mid year two first july is the middle of the year so um happy day happy birthday to ohima lucy this is coming from kwabna i guess kwabna is a cherished friend of yours and he and today uh, we roll on with uh, dreadlocked Michelle Harbour, Nutera, um, we are all wishing you the best in life. I love yours and um, wishing you an iriest or the iriest birthday for yourself. That's a nice smile. Who's next on the birthday wish list for today? Right, Missy Elliott. For a few decades ago, she was the trendiest American rapper. Um, on our CDs and cassette tapes. American rapper, singer, songwriter, record producer, dancer, actress, and philanthropist. Right, happy birthday to you, Missy Elliott. And that seems like the, uh, the end of the birthday wishes, but that's not all. Happy belated birthday goes out to a special uh, person for all of us in the studio today. She's none other than Madame Susanna Lamle Lamte, of course, the wife of um, my gentle um, guest this morning. So you wish her a belated happy birthday 
on our behalf as well. We thank you very much. And we also say thank you to those of you who, um, you know, sent in your calls at the beginning of the uh, program. Are there any more messages for me to read? Well, let me just read a couple, maybe one or two, before um, we say our goodbyes with our guest this morning. Ha, ha, ha. The NDC is bleeding sitting on the right-hand side of the Lord, Sit <laughs> sipping club beer with happiness. <laughs> Greetings, Netu Television from Hamburg. This one says, um, um, oh, the messages just disappeared. Anyway, whilst waiting for the messages to reappear, Honorable, what would you be your final uh, message for the teaming supporters of not just the NPP, but for our audience? Yeah, thank you. Uh, today is the second day of the registration exercise. Right. Um, I rush to your studios here. From here, I'll be, you know, doing the rounds here mm. in the region to see. The plan was extremely successful right. uh, in terms of turnout. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, there were a few challenges that you know uh, came up um, before I got here. I read a response from the electoral commission saying that they have taken note and they are uh, addressing them appropriately. And right. so my conviction is that uh, that should suffice okay. for today's operation. Right. I want to urge mm. all Ghanaians mm. who are 80 years and above, mm. um, Unfortunately, who are time is, of sound mind yeah. to get out and, and register. Thank it's you. their right, and they must have it. Thank you very much. But as you go to register, make sure you sanitize your hands as regular as you can if you've forgotten to wash your hands with soap and that running water. Let's make sure we wear our nose mask. It is mandatory, not just to the exercise, but the president. So make sure we have our nose mask even if we are going to register and uh, let's ensure we adhere to the social distancing protocols a meter or two distance apart from your next uh, person will not harm or kill you um this has been isaac clote my guest was the uh, was the new patriotic party chairperson for the greater Accra region divine otu agoham this note, we say thank you for making a date with us. Yao Amofa comes your way, as usual, with a look at the national agenda. <laughs>